There are days for adjectives and there are days for cold facts. The Prime Minister gets up. He's going nowhere. He sends his newly appointed Chancellor, Nadim Zahawi, to do the morning round of broadcast interviews. At 8.11, Laura Trott from the Department of Transport resigns. Mr Zahawi keeps talking. 8.25, Will Quince, Education Minister, resigns. Mr Zahawi concludes. 9.43, Robin Walker, Education Minister, resigns. 11.05, Felicity Buchan, Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Department of Business, resigns. A minute later, John Glenn, Treasury Minister, resigns. But at 11.36am, Victoria Atkins, Justice Minister, resigns. At midday, Joe Churchill, Environment Minister, resigns. 40 minutes later, Stuart Andrew, Housing Minister, resigns. Followed in quick succession by Claire Coutinho at the Treasury, David Johnson at the Department for Education and Selene Saxby from DEFRA. By now, the Prime Minister has completed questions in the Commons, during which he was savaged by Keir Starmer, the Labour leader. Awful behaviour, unacceptable in any walk of life. It's there for all to see, but he ignores it. It was the same when his ally was on the take from the lobbyists. It was the same when his Home Secretary was bullying staff. It was the same when taxpayers' money was being abused. And it was the same when he and his mates parted their way through lockdown. Anyone quitting now after defending all that hasn't got a shred of integrity. Mr Speaker, isn't this the first recorded case of the sinking ships fleeing the rat? The Prime Minister, accustomed to roars of approval from the Tory benches, was mostly heard in silence. After that, Sajid Javid, who resigned as Health Secretary last night, told the Commons that enough was enough. I have concluded that the problem starts at the top, and I believe that is not going to change. And that means that it is for those of us in a position who have responsibility to make that change. Michael Gove, the levelling up secretary, then writes to the Prime Minister, withdrawing his support. Controversially, he does not resign. At 2.24, Kemi Badnock, Equalities Minister, Alex Berghardt, Education Minister, Julia Lopez, Minister of the Department for Culture, Neil O'Brien, Minister of the Department for Leveling Up, and Lee Rowley, Minister for Industry, resign. Two minutes later, Mims Davies, Employment Minister of the Department for Work and Pension, resigns. In the course of the afternoon, as Tory MPs discuss changing their internal rules so they can remove Boris Johnson later this month, another six ministers resign. Johnson goes to a committee meeting where a succession of the most senior MPs in the Commons, in effect, plead with him to go. He seems unmoved. Even more resignations than any Prime Minister's in 1932. Michael Gove has told you to go. The shit adds up. The game's up, really. Will you be Prime Minister tomorrow? Uh, uh, of course, uh, Mr McNeil. Uh, but the next uh, week? I'm, I'm, but I'm here to... Uh, rather than giving any running commentary on uh, my own the uh, career, I'm, I'm, here to, all after Mr. I'm here to talk about uh, what the government is doing. Of course. I don't think of course. I told you last night that I thought this Prime Ministership was over. I still do. I'm not the only one in the last hour or so a group of four ministers who haven't resigned went to tell the chief whip his time was up. They're now in Downing Street waiting to speak to the prime minister himself. One of them was Nahim Nadim Zahawi, his own newly appointed chancellor who began today with such optimism. Tonight, there are renewed whispers that Johnson might try to dissolve Parliament rather than leave voluntarily. He has just denied that and that would be a tear down the House policy, not grown up politics. If Boris Johnson carries on much longer like this, it isn't his own reputation that he will destroy, it's the Conservative Party.